So I did it. Me. This guy right here. I finally accomplished my lifelong goal of owning a motorcycle from the Orange County Chopper TV show. You remember OCC, a show about an old guy with a Fu Manchu that yells a lot. Not only is the Chopper the most American thing out there, it's more American than hot dogs and more American than Chinese buffets. It's one of the most famous types of motorcycles because everyone knows what a Chopper is, even kids, even women. And according to Bruce Willis, the Chopper has grown so famous that it's not even a motorcycle anymore, it's its own thing. It's a chopper, baby. All of my childhood heroes either rode choppers or were choppers. Not to be confused with Chomper from Land Before Time, who is my arch enemy, stole my girlfriend in the third grade. Uh -oh. If I've learned anything from TVs and movies, it's that choppers are really cool, and the coolest, most famous brand of choppers was the Orange County Choppers because of their TV show. It was so popular. They even had a roller coaster named after them called the Orange County Motor Coaster. So we've established that it's cool, but why is it so cool? And the answer is pretty simple. It's a chopper. Even kindergarten teachers like choppers. And I finally got one, and it's awesome. So this was a custom-built bike for a fan of the show. And they, they actually did it for four different fans. They called this bike series the Fantasy Bike Winner. fan to see bike. They even put it on the dog tag, which gives me an idea to start a reality cooking show with cannibals. We'll call it Fan Tasty. And the winner, of course, gets cooked and eaten on the show, but I mean, I, I would watch it. Discovery Channel, hit me up. We'll talk. So the story about this bike is actually pretty cool. In 2006, season three, episode five, the guys from OCC chose one lucky winner, but it was not as much luck as it was his story and his personality. So here's a little secret that they kind of let out in the middle of the episode. If you're ever trying to win something on a TV show or on some type of video, they're gonna vet you to make sure that you're super charismatic and you're excited and you might be crying and laughing and doing backflips because that's contagious and people just love seeing that stuff. The last thing they want on video is this. Hi, I'm Sean. I love motorcycles. Motorcycles makes me so happy. I can't be many more happier with motorcycles. So they picked a really cool guy named Jeff Clegg. And he had a really good story about being in the army and then all the stuff that he sacrificed for the sake of his family. But he doesn't have a motorcycle. So tip number two, if you're gonna win something on TV, is you gotta have a good story. You gotta be that underdog that everyone wants to see rise up. And you also have to be a super fan. It'd be real funny if the guys from OCC came up to the guy's house and he was like, oh, you, who, who are you guys? Oh, you're those bike guys from TV. As, as hilarious as that would be, it's not gonna work for TV. Although that's exactly what happens every time I give him a bike away. It's funny for us, that's not gonna fly with them. So what was interesting is that we actually found out that Jeff had been designing this exact bike for years. He knew exactly what he wanted, from the paint schemes, to the tires, to the handlebars. And if you're wondering, I didn't buy this bike from someone from around an auction for someone who bought it from Jeff or you know whatever. I bought it directly from Jeff. I, I, I talked to the guy. And this was his dream bike. I mean, he had been dreaming about this thing for years. I still don't really know why he sold it. So the interesting thing is, depending on what state you live in, uh, the title information could actually devalue your bike. If you look here, it says make Oran, O-R-A-N, body style, road and street, model, T-Rex. If I was buying this site unseen, I would question whether this is even an Orange County Chopper bike. That's why he kept the original MSO. It's got the Orange County Chopper logo up there, make Orange County Choppers, series model, T-Rex rigid. It's even signed right here by the boss man himself, Paul Tuttle. He was probably, you know, yelling at someone while he was signing. I think I see some spittle marks on there. To be honest, I, and, and I can't stress this enough, there was a lot of yelling in this show, and it really affected me deeply. And don't bother coming in tomorrow because you're terminated. Good, it's about time. And that really affected me because I modeled my management style of running a bike dealership after him. Are you kidding me? You're supposed to be out there buying bikes. You're in here on your stupid computer doing who knows what you got to kidding me, man. Hey, Caleb, you've been in the bathroom for 20 minutes, and I hear you watching This Is Us, and you know that was our TV show. And then 15 years later, I stumble on the only Orange County Chopper motorcycle listed on the internet. So he had it listed for, I think, $14,000. I made him an offer for eight. I don't hear anything from him for a couple weeks. 
Then about three weeks later, I get a little message in my inbox saying he accepts my offer. So I do the next best thing. I wire him the money sight unseen, which is the most exciting way to buy your motorcycles. And in my case, your wives. I thought I was buying a woman from Georgia, the country. I get a woman from Georgia, the state. Then we arrange the shipping. And a few weeks later, this thing shows up at my shop. Now, if you think this bike is missing something in the back, uh, you might be kind of correct. This is what they call a rigid, which means there's no actual, there's no suspension. There's not even springs in the seat. This is exactly, this is exactly what he wanted when he wanted to build a bike, which means that the only suspension it has is your spine. Every time you hit a bump, you're getting closer and closer to this chart with the, with the old man with osteoporosis. So every little bump you hit is fairly painful. And as far as I know, there has never been a major motorcycle manufacturer that's ever made a motorcycle with no rear suspension because it's just painful to ride. But it looks cool because springs are dumb and spikes are dangerous. Spikes, spikes, spikes. Spikes, 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 and spikes, and little spikes, and little spikes. To be honest with you, spikes are the dumbest thing. It's the dumbest fad I've ever seen of people putting the stupidest things on your motorcycle. If you're going to wreck your bike, the last thing you want is impalers just coming at you. Just it, It's a horrible idea. But doing it... Doing it. It also has an open primary, which might be a problem if you're wearing pants, because that could get caught up in there. It's also a problem if you're not wearing pants, because then your leg might touch this. This is basically an upside down belt sander attached to the side of your motorcycle. So with all the gears and belts and stuff hanging, all, all kind of moving super fast while you're riding, if motorcycles weren't dangerous before, we just stepped it up a notch. So by now I'm sure you're dying to know what this thing rides like. And so was I, because for an initial valuation of $80,000, it can't be that bad. Thousands of people who bought shoppers cannot all be crazy. And I was completely wrong. The bike was by far the worst motorcycle I had ever ridden. And I once put a two-stroke CR500 dirt bike motor in a Harley Davidson Sportster that rattled all the welds loose, and it was better than this chopper. I once put a Harbor Freight motor in a Harley Davidson Electroglide and it was way better than this chopper. Awesome! I once rode a motorcycle that had a 600 horsepower V8 between my legs and it was a better ride than this chopper. Let's start with the brakes. The front brakes are basically non-existent. If you're trusting in these, like you should when riding a motorcycle, you will die. The rear brakes are way too touchy. So if you need to use them quickly, you're going to lock up the back end and go into a slide, which sounds awesome. and is awesome. The seat is way too slippery and slopes back in a way that's great if you like the sensation of sliding off your motorcycle, which could very well happen with this bike, which causes you to hold on to the handlebars for dear life, which handlebars are not for holding on to, they're for steering the bike. The mirror vibrates so much that you can't see anything behind you, and even though the bike hardly has any electronics, the battery seems to always be dead, even though it's got a new battery. But so what? It's not that great of a ride. But the most exciting thing for me is this bike is these fairly large American built engines that they put on these things. A lot of these things are pushing out big power and choppers are actually pretty quick compared to this size. That's why they put these giant tires on the back because you need more contact pads for doing burnouts and keeping that, keeping that bike on the ground. And the only way to really find out how much power these things are putting to the ground, you gotta take it to a dyno, which we did with our dyno expert, Brandon. All right, so now we're at Appalachian Harley Davidson. My man Brandon, who's getting us a new battery because the battery's kind of kind of dead. And we're gonna see what this thing runs on the dyno. I have no idea. Craig, wait, what's your guess? I think we're gonna get just over 100. I would be happy if it does over 70 horsepower. Let's see what Brandon thinks about the uh, his guess. He's done a lot. He, he could get guess pretty close. So what's your uh, what's your guess on the horsepower number? I, if there's a baby in here, 100 maybe. You know, I don't think it's a big boy. We'll like, I'm, I was thinking like 70. The carburetor was getting a little stuck, but after a few taps with a hammer, 
this big American motor was ready to show us some big horsepower numbers. Wait, hold on, say it again. A little stocker, a little 80 inch Evo. What's, it, what's the order of peak ones on it? It was like six, what did we see, 62, 62 horsepower? It was so weak. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 62 horsepower, 72 foot pound torque. Oh, down there to 73, 63. That's so right. 73, yeah. Oh, what did yeah. you say, 75? Yeah. So we're gonna do 80 divided by, that is $1,095.89 per horsepower. Nice. It's about how it looks, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wow, yeah. so they spent all that time in that build and they put a stock that's, Evo yeah. engine in. Yeah, that's just a little idiot, a little baby, <laughs> a little normal guy. A bone stock Harley Evo motor. Come on, man. I had really high expectations for this chopper because it's a chopper. Is everything that I knew about motorcycles wrong? Is everything that I knew about life wrong? Are scooters and cats now cool? And then I realized something. Nothing about the way I described this bike was contradicting to the way I originally perceived it. Just because it can't stop, it's kinda slow, it's super dangerous, has tons of spikes to impale you, is uncomfortable to ride, has no speedometer, and was originally $8,000, does not change the fact that it's still cool. Because just like fast cars, ninja swords, Hugh Jackman, backwards hats, foldable shovels, and my wife, most cool things are not practical, comfortable, needed, and have no return policies. But it doesn't mean it has to be that way. Could it still be cool? If it were comfortable and actually stopped when you pressed the brakes, if it actually performed well, if it was pretty quick, maybe we should find out. Don't forget to subscribe, comment below what you guys think we should do with this bike next. Watch this video right here. We'll see you guys next time.